One of the hardest things to do is change someone's perceptions or ideas about what's going on with them in food or them in their bodies because more often than not they have negative ideas about it. They think something's wrong with them. They think they're broken. They think that they're damaged goods in some ways. And so to shift that so that somebody starts to understand that they're doing whatever they're doing with food or eating for a reason, and sometimes it's even a good reason, but the reason remains a mystery in the beginning. And so, for example, I would use the metaphor of the red herring to, to explain this. So let's say you're following a whodunit mystery, and you're going, okay, who killed the old lady? Is it the maid, the butler, or the chauffeur? And everybody's following this mystery, and they're trying to figure it out. And everyone's watching the maid because she's acting kind of weird. She's doing strange things. She's, she's peculiar in some ways. And everybody's attention is on the maid. And at the end of the story, there's a twist. It was the butler who nobody suspected because everybody's busy watching the maid. So the problem with disordered eating or eating disorders is more often than not, the food, the fat, the number on the scale, is the red herring. It's the distracting element and unfortunately everybody gets concerned about that to the degree that they're not paying attention to anything else. And so what happens then is the real issues, the real culprit never gets discovered. And so oftentimes those who are struggling with eating disorders get focused on calories or fat grams or carbohydrates or, the, or, or concerned family members and friends on the numbers on the scale and unfortunately sometimes even professionals get so totally absolutely focused on these they become red herrings and the whole complete picture never gets discovered because if you can understand the meaning of why you're doing what you're doing and if you can understand that there's a good reason for your doing what you're doing but it's a bit of a mystery now you've accessed through the struggle your inner guidance system that's going to take you to the life that's just right for you not the life you should be living or the life other people want you to live but the life that is the best fit for you. Why? Because it's what nourishes your particular hungers. It's what nurtures your soul. And so for me this is where we find the joy of recovery. When you learn the language of metaphor and when you understand the symbolism of the struggle, there comes great freedom and joy. Anita Johnston is the best-selling author of Eating in the Light of the Moon, which is available from Gers Books at bulimia.com.